Hey, what's up? And in this video, I'm interviewing one of our past clients, L. Uh, L, uh, her niche is she is an Instagram coach. Uh, she joined us and she had around about 6,000 followers on Instagram. She was only earning uh, less than $1,000 from her Instagram account. Uh, she had multiple offers, coaching, coaching programs, social media management. Um, and she came to us looking for help to find that one main offer, refine her uh, process of getting clients, refine her overall Instagram itself, and then scale. Uh, and when she joined us, she was actually working full time, uh, obviously doing her own her own business, but also working full time for a company called The Future, uh, who a lot of people will know who The Future are. If you don't, you can look them up there, but very big. Uh, but she was working full time for that business. Um, and her main goal was that by the end of working together with us, she wanted to be able to go full time with her own business and essentially stop working for The Future or just very much reduce her hours to the bare minimum. Um, and that is exactly what happened. So after working with us, uh, she now has, I think, you know, well, more than 6,000 followers, maybe 30, 40,000 now, I can't remember the exact number. Uh, she has now gone from less than 1,000 per month to consistently doing over 10,000 per month. Uh, I think even up to 15,000 as well she's been doing. Um, and we've now helped her to refine her offer down to just one main offer, one main program, uh, where she helps people to kind of grow on Instagram, create better content. Uh, and build a better presence online. Thanks so much for taking your time out of your day to do this. Um, obviously, like I mentioned to you, I've already given you a bit of an introduction on the video. Um, but yeah, in your own words, you just explain, you know, 30 seconds, give or take, a bit about yourself, who you are, what you've done, um, and kind of the transformation you've gone through since you joined our program quite a while ago now. Yeah, sure. So, uh, hi, I'm Elle. I'm an Instagram coach. So when I joined the program, I wasn't looking for help with Instagram as such. I was more looking to structure my offer. So I'd been consulting for around about a year on the side of working kind of part time for the future. So sorry, full time slash part time, you know, depends how my schedule was. Um, but I wanted to kind of create a business that I could eventually do full time by myself. And so at the start of this year, so we're going back uh, nine months now, I reached out to you to join the program um, so that I could figure out basically how to turn this business into my full time job. Yeah, fantastic. I didn't realize it was nine months. I thought it was a bit less than that. That's quite mad. That is. <laughs> it's gone by um, so quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just not everyone's going to know who the future is. And so you don't have to say much about it, but just explain because it, it's a big thing. The future are big, you know. So I think not everyone knows that. Just quickly say about the future, who they are, and kind of what you've actually done for them, give a bit more context to it. Yeah, that's a good question. So the future we are, well, we, I should say we were, I don't work for them anymore, which is obviously a good move on my part. Um, we were a creative uh, online platform. So we're all about teaching creatives how to really become entrepreneurs. So, you know, working in that job, I learned a lot as well about how to structure myself as a business, what to figure out, you know, how to figure out your offer, um, in the competing market as well. It's really for creative, so designers and people like that, but a lot of people got value from it. Mm. And the Future's mission was to teach 1 billion people basically how to be a creative entrepreneur. Yeah, brilliant. Amazing. I just thought it's important to put that in there because it's like, you know, it's not just like a, a random sort of business. It's like a massive business, a massive, um, I guess you can call it an enterprise now uh, with a massive follow on YouTube. And you obviously played quite a big role in that as well, I know. Um, which you might want to bring up at some point as well in this conversation. So anyway, let's go back to uh, nine months ago. So back to January or whenever it was, when you decided to invest, join a program and kind of, you know, make those changes. Like you said, Instagram was fine. You know, you was growing, you knew how to be on Instagram. That was all kind of moving in the right direction. Anyway, it's more the business, the offer, sales side of things you had to change. But you've had obviously quite a lot of success since then. Out of everything, what do you think has been the, um, what have been the biggest changes, whether it's one big change or multiple, like what have been the, the changes you've made, you've seen that have made the biggest impact to the success you've had? Yeah, so I, I basically have been a social media manager um, in and out for about seven years now. So yeah. coming up in the industry, the future hired me to do Facebook ads. So I've always, you know, I, with a marketing degree as well, I've always kind of had this understanding of why, what makes people buy and what's attractive to them. But 
applying that on an individual level, it's also hard to then be like, okay, how does this work on Instagram? And how does this mean I should structure my business? So even though I'm, I'd like to call myself an Instagram specialist, and that's what I did for the future as well, is Instagram marketing. Um, really kind of structuring your own offer and figuring that out is different than when you work for a business and they already have that product or that service for you to then sell. Yeah. So that's kind of what I needed help with. Mm-hmm. And something I didn't think I would get value from in the program was the Instagram side, but actually seeing how you came in with it and thought, okay, each post really does need to have more of a purpose behind it. That was also a big game changer for me. So uh, learning how to actually put in a little bit less time, but actually that effort takes you so much further. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, Yeah, I think that's interesting you say that because we get obviously a lot of people join a program who already are good at Instagram or who already know Instagram. And I think it's important to understand that as much as you think you know, there's always something else to learn. Um, It's the same with me. You know, I've learned things from our students about Instagram or other things that I didn't already know. Um, you know, it's that always being being a student, I guess, all the time is important for growth, you know, for, for development and making sure you don't have any um, uh, blind spots, I guess, in that process. Um, something that's been interesting about you and I guess kind of more of a unique case is that you obviously had a full time position with the future. And I remember speaking about it. And I think the very first time we spoke about it, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think what you said in terms of like your goals was you probably wanted to go to part time. I don't think you were really considering going full time in your own business at that moment. Um, obviously, now you have gone full time. So what what changed? You know, did, was it a, a belief thing that you realized you could do it? Was it an enjoyment thing? Like, what do you think changed that made you say, you know what, now I'm going to go full time on my own? Yeah, it it was funny because it was actually Ben Burns, so one of the creative directors at The Future, who has been basically the mentor for me the whole time I've worked there. He's been incredible, like seen me through a lot. And so when I approached him, he actually came to me at the end of one of our weekly calls and said, I feel like my spidey senses are tingling and I feel like you need to tell me something. And he was like, I just want to check in, like, how's everything going? Mm. And I was not willing to tell, I wasn't prepared basically to tell him what the success that I've had in my own business and creating my own offer and things like that. So I was just kind of talking about future related stuff. And then it just kind of came into conversation Mm. and he really put on his mentor hat and said to me, you know, like, where do you see yourself? You know, what do you want to do? as a business and like where do you see yourself in this role because I've been working there for over four years and they actually hired me as an intern and quickly was like the marketing coordinator but like going from that position to where we are now my role has changed so much because whilst the future is massive we are still quite a small company and so, you know, there's only like 15 or so people. So you have to wear a lot of hats and that. Yeah. So my role changed a lot. And he basically said, you know, go away and think about it. We'll meet again in a week or two and come prepare with what you want to do and where you want to go. Yeah. So I created a list of basically like these are responsibilities I do. This is kind of where I'd like to shift that. So these are the things I actually enjoy doing. These are the things I don't enjoy doing. And he basically said, and I kind of came into it like, oh, I feel like none of this is actually what I really want to do. Yeah. And he's honestly sensed it and was like, you know, what's what's really going on here? So we kind of got really into it, talked about the business, talked about the success. And he had actually he come across my profile again recently. Yeah. I was like, I didn't realize you had like such success on the side. Like, mm. you know, I see what you do within the company, but I didn't realize El Social had blown up so much. Yeah. And so he kind of walked me through it, you know, like what's holding you back? Like, this is exactly what we teach is creatives to have that confidence really to be like, you know, I know what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to structure it. This is how I'm going to sell myself. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, are you kind of using the future as a comfort blanket? Because I actually said, um, oh, maybe I should just, I've got to go on a sabbatical, you know, I work a month or two and then see how it goes. And basically he's like, you're just using the future as like a fallback. And in his experience, if you go for it, if you have to make it work, you will make it work. So he's like, if you have the future to come back to, you're not going to give it your all, in my opinion. So what do you think? And I was like, yeah, you're kind of just telling me everything I needed to hear anyway. And honestly, at the end of that call, we'd already agreed, you know, like, yeah, this is the best move for me is to just go for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think I remember having a, a few similar conversations along those sort of lines as well. And I think that 
um I, I didn't know that had actually had happened so that's actually quite interesting to hear that and i think that that's um you know no, good good on ben good on the future you know there's such a good thing they've actually done that and actually taken the time mm -hmm. to have that conversation because most businesses probably wouldn't do that you know most businesses wouldn't take that into account wouldn't take into account what you think your goals your visions and, and other things you know and i think that's um does a lot of uh, there's a lot of good faith there for the future now that they will find someone else who will put in the same amount of effort and time and commitment that you did um you know and it obviously all comes you know back around for everyone so i think that that's great to hear that um i think it's great that you eventually say you know what no i know what i want i know what i need to do and you made that jump what mm -hmm. would your advice be then let's say there's someone watching who is um they might be a creative they might be a designer branding whatever or they might not be they might just be in a job that they enjoy that they're comfortable in but they have these dreams these ideas of being a business owner having their own business what would your advice be for someone who is considering um and is looking to make that jump what would your advice be to to make that jump what would be i don't know like the main things they have to do to get ready to do that yeah that's a good question i would say you know figuring out what you want to offer first and foremost and if that's needed as well you know like a lot of people offer things but it's just there's no market for it like people aren't really shopping for it maybe yeah. you're too early so people don't realize they need it yet like you're too ahead of the game or it's just too familiar you know there's 10 other people that offer it way better than you do so yeah. figuring out what you want to do and if there's a market for it and kind of how I did it and I think it's just because I'm quite a cautious person was I was very happy working on this on the side of having a full-time job to be like you know this is still going to be my priority because you've got to put your job first but on the side you know I'm always going to work for this and see how it goes because yeah. then you there's not as much pressure to make it work and I feel like when I was working with you in the last nine months, that's when things really started to kick off. And I was like, oh, all this money is extra money. So I'm like, you know, I'm really raking it in now. Like I'm basically working two jobs. Mm -hmm. So I had a good cushion to fall back on of yeah. if I have a bad month, you know, I think planning in advance financially yeah. will take a lot of that pressure off. Because I still had that, you know, like when I got off the call with Ben, I was literally like crying. I was so happy. I was like, I can't believe this has finally happened. Like, I didn't think that was going to happen yeah. today. And I was just like ecstatic. Mm -hmm. But and I literally every hour was like, oh, my God, what have I done? Oh, no, I'm so excited. Oh, no, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> so having like the, you know, being like, no, I, I've already got my offer. I know it works because I've sold it several times. Yeah. Um, I've already increased the price several times and I have the finances to fall back on. I think when you have that, it takes away a bit of that pressure to be like, you know, do or die kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I think that like that's definitely, I always recommend that to people. If you're in a job, you want to, you know, quit the job, go full time and do your own thing. Like 100%, definitely do it. I would always say to everyone, if you want to do it, do it. But you have to be realistic. You have to have, you know, three, six months worth of, you know, income uh, or your essential saved up to fall back on, like you said, plus some emergency money if in case you need it. Um, and I always say to people, look, you know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, worst case scenario is you leave your job, you go and try and do your own thing, doesn't work out, you go back to your job or you just go and get another job somewhere else. You know, it's, it's like, that's really the worst case scenario. You go and get a job at McDonald's or something. Like everyone could do it. doesn't matter as long as you're earning enough to survive. Um that's what matters if not go and live with your parents again you know so that's really yeah. the worst that could happen um yeah. and you well, actually asked why. me a really good question of when I was pricing my offer is mm. like how much you actually need to keep you going every month because yeah. everyone comes into it like oh I want to make 10k right or 10k plus but then you're like but how much do you actually need because most yeah. people don't make you know half of that now and I wasn't either mm. so I was like actually yeah obviously I want 10k but I probably only need like four yeah. minimum and I would be fine yeah. So I think also having that realism in place of like, okay, what do I need? And then everything else is like, yeah, I'm really succeeding here. Yeah. Yeah. hundred um, percent. So another question for you in terms of your, I guess, lifestyle now, what impact has this program, this kind of um, journey you've been on, like what impact has it had on your lifestyle outside of the, the work side of things, like just general lifestyle, like what impact has it had? 
Yeah, I feel, I mean, it's, it's right now things are a bit crazy, like in a good way. Like I can't complain, right? I put on a story about my program and get like one week I had 100 direct messages to reply to. And I was like, okay, this is insane. Yeah. Trying to manage this on my own, yeah. um, but in a good way, right? So like when I was working with you, a lot of my struggle was trying to always compete with, oh, I have to do this for the future. And then I have to switch and put, you know, I'll make our social the priority. Yeah. So and we talked about this as well on a call is waking up and being like, I get to structure my day around all the things I want to do for my own business mm. is that, like, I still kept going to open Slack because I was so used to doing it for the future <laughs> or like my diary would always be split between the two jobs. And now knowing that everything is working towards just my business yeah. is so freeing, even though it, right now it's, it's probably more work because I'm still yeah. streamlining that success. Mm. Mm. But yeah, having that, you know, freedom and, you know, I've always been really big on the work life balance. So in the middle of the day, if I want to go to the gym or take a break and go and get some sunshine for a bit, yeah. I will do that and be like, I'll just work later tonight if I need to yeah. um, really having that extra flexibility of scheduling my own hours. So mm. I try not to schedule calls on a Monday with my clients and, you know, between like 10 and two, I'll do calls because mm. that's when I know I'm like, I'm happy to start, sit on camera for a few hours. So really just that ownership of my own time is, it's been really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Cool. Um, in terms of time, I know we're running out of time. So I want to get to the last question very quickly for you. Um, when you did invest in yourself, and obviously this is again, going back nine months, give or take. Um, for everyone who does invest in themselves at some point in, in a program, whatever it is, there's usually like a reason, you know, or there's some kind of um, tipping point, you know, or something happens, you realize that now is the time to invest in yourself. Now is it's now or never, basically. So for you, it might be hard to remember exactly what it was, or you might know exactly what it was. But back in January, when you did invest in that program, what was the reason? You know, what was the reason you decided that, okay, now is the time I'm going to do it? And, you know, I'm going to go with Harry. Like, what was that kind of reason you had? Yeah, I would say, well, the reason I went with you particularly was because of the way that you position yourself on Instagram. I was, you were kind of like my only option. I like knew if I wanted to do it, you were my go-to guy. Yeah. And then when we were on the call, I remember you were kind of like, you know, what's your decision? And I, as I mentioned before, very cautious. I was like, oh, I really need the weekend to think about it. And you were like, you know, why? You were obviously respectful that I want to think about yeah. it, but you're like, you know, what difference is it going to make? Mm. And now being on the other end of that sales call, I get, you know, that you're like, you know, if you get off the call, you're probably just going to talk yourself out of it. But I kind of did the opposite. Like I would call my mom and I would tell her because I'd never invested in a coach before as well. So this was massive for me. Mm. And it was kind of like, if not now, then when? Right. And I remember we, even we spoke about me joining the program, but not starting for a month. And you're like, why? Right. Like, <laughs> what are you what are you waiting for? And yeah. now it's like, I can't believe I left my job. Like we said, I didn't think that was going to be the, the end result, even yeah. by the end of the year. And yeah. now it's September and I've already done it. So I think, yeah, like you've got to think, you know, if you put it off any longer, what's what's it really helping you're just going to be in the same situation for more time to come whereas you could be making changes like i can't believe the changes it's made in just that time alone yeah 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 a thousand percent and it's like that's that was the same with me when i invested in myself quite a while ago now well i still do but when i first done it you know properly and it's like it's one of those lessons of um you know it's a lesson that you have to well for most people it's a lesson you have to experience to learn it you know, it's like, it's not one of those lessons that, you know, you just get, you hear it all the time, invest in yourself, don't wait around, don't waste time. Like you, everyone says that to you, but until you've actually done it and been through that process, you don't actually understand the, the weight of that, you know, mm -hmm. and the difference it can make. Because yeah, like you said, if, imagine if you had left it an extra month, um, you know, to get started, well, you know, you, you think about the, the butterfly effects and all that sort of thing. Like if you did wait a month, well, maybe you wouldn't have left your job. Maybe you wouldn't have signed as many clients as you had or grown as much. It's like all these things could have not happened because you delayed it just by one month, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah, re really, really powerful uh, way to finish the call, I think. So thank you so much for that. Uh, thanks for your kind words as well. Um, just to finish off, if people want to find you, where's the best place to find you? I'll put it in the uh, description down below, but where's the best place? Yeah, Instagram is the best place. So L.social, you can find me there. Cool, perfect. 